India is actually a very big entertainment consumption market. It's deeply personal mm. when you're watching uh, online. Nobody else knows. So you have your guilty pleasures as well as you have your conversation pieces. Sure. The audience has gotten more ruthless mm. at one level where they're saying there's value for our time and our money. I think when you're going long format, asking someone to commit 10 hours of her time, right. it bloody be good. Like even Scorsese needs to come to Netflix. And it's such a shame. Why? In the big Why, is it, Why is it a shame? Guys, <laughs> <laughs> you don't miss the theatre, really? Mm. You don't have to put on your pants and get into a cab and go to a cinema hall. And it's then you're stuck over it. Hello and welcome to Sit With Hitlist, our, our special edition of Sit With Hitlist, which is our award winning podcast and print series. Except in that series, as you may have noticed, we do one on one conversations. Here it's one on seven. And there are two reasons for it, because one, we have some of the top players of the over-the-top industry, or OTT as it's called, the web platform industry. And that's because we're going to announce the Midday and Radio City's first hit list awards honoring the best of content available on the internet or web. On, honoring the best of content available in SWOT as it's called, the subscriber-based video on demand. The second reason is, guys, it's so amazing to have all of you in one room. This is fabulous. Uh, I'll start with you, Ridhima. Uh, name, uh, organizations. Ridhima Lula. I work at Eros. Vikram Malhotra, Abandantia. Gaurav Verma, Red Chilis. Shrishti Arya, Netflix. Samir Nair, Applause. Nachi Ket Pantwaidde, Balaji. Vijay Subramaniam, Amazon Prime Video. Got it. And you know, I use this really big word, S word, yeah. because you know, our viewers should know what it means. As against A word, which is advertiser based, you know, video on demand service. I want one of you to tell me and whoever is the first one to answer. Thank you very much. What the F is OTT? Why is it called OTT? Why is it, what is over the top? Why is this industry called OTT in the first place? Well, okay, OTT over the top is a service that exists on top of an existing service. Okay. Um, so I think the way it sort of evolved was that, you know, the telecom players and the broadband cable players hmm. laid all the cables hmm. and created the internet. Right. And then these services, video streaming services got built on top of it. It's not just this anything, a music streaming is the same thing, it's OTT. Okay. Anything which is rests on top of these services is called OTT. Of course, now the content we are making is also OTT. So right. it sort of fits well with this. No, it's but not actually. If you look at it in terms of, it's, it's far less OTT than the content that would have been mass based content say about 20 years ago, right? Yes? No? No, yeah. no. I, okay. I mean, of course. Hmm. That was OTT? I, I 80s was OTT, 80s was 90s was OTT. But it depends, you know, OTT is a function of society at its time. Right. And coming from there, it's more OTT for then or now. Right. But, uh, so basically what you're saying is that I have a cell phone uh, that gives me basic service of a cell phone, which is texting, which is uh, everything else that I can do with the cell phone, of course, talking on the phone. And then over that, the whatever I'm getting is, is an over the top service. Right. So like your social media would be OTT. Would be an OTT as yeah, well. Because it needs these services to rest on it. Right. You would all be in everyone's eyes watching this and those who are also watching from behind the camera would be veterans in your field uh, in the media and entertainment business because you've been around for long. Um, okay, with mind you're much younger. <laughs> but even then so you've also worked in other things because no one can possibly be a veteran in the OTT space because hardly five to six years old. Now, I'm going to start with you, Vijay, and then come this way. You need to tell me what were the unlearnings, as it were, when you actually came to OTT platform as an industry, and what are the new things you learned because you were moving from conventional entertainment to what is now. Well, it's mainstream, all right, but it's still new. So I think I'll, I'll simplify the answer by telling right. you what remains the same and what's new. Yeah. So what remains the same is the amount of... Um, understanding you have of customers' taste and preferences mm. as they evolve and entertainment is, is constantly evolving. So it's really important to stay focused on her and make mm. sure that you don't take her understanding of what she really cares about for granted. I think that remains the same. What's different is uh, you recognize that every customer is her own programmer mm. uh, and programming now is uh, completely democratic. Right. You're not really putting anything there at a certain point in time in the hope that everybody will, you know. You're saying there's no appointment it. viewing in that sense. Well, I, there is appointment viewing, right. except that it's one on one. Mm. So when I'm watching a show, that is by appointment to me. Right. But it's not by the, the traditional definition of how you look at appointment viewing. Right. 
and so therefore it's important to recognize that different people are going to make different appointments with different pieces of content right. and so it's really important to be able to serve all of those segments and sub segments of customers equally hmm. and enthusiastically so you, regardless of one's own biases towards storytelling right. so i think this is what's changed hmm. and that's what uh, remains the same right. okay one of the two new things that one has to grapple with is to look at individual choices in a digital world when you're mm. in broadcasting you're looking at at four people watching tele television together a family. of course somebody is right. controlling the remote but the whole family watches uh, together that changes in digital mm. with the mobile first right. and i think that will change again with smart tvs being sold so we are up for another upheaval mm. the second thing is i think you are precise with data in digital mm. in broadcasting the data that you get is an approximation of a sample right. of uh, and people a pretty being small stuck. sample right if you see it in terms of the universe the larger universe yeah but if we go on that topic this will be another four i know hours. i know i'm just saying <laughs> right. yes right. so uh, but a, but a whole lot of advertising <laughs> is spent on that right. but it's a sample versus actual right. precise data Data. Hmm. And I think third, uh, thirdly, and very importantly, uh, the rules are being rewritten again. So you are just about a veteran in an industry. You come back and you have to say, "I know nothing," right. and start off with a consumer tech uh, mindset, hmm. which probably you would not be having if you've been doing broadcasting for 20, 25 years. Like you or you know, Sami would also probably testify. So I think those were the broad changes. Hmm. Um, and sometimes you have to take a pay cut if it's a startup. Fair enough. Fair enough. Samir, I think the big changes that are occurring is that uh, broadcast hmm. per se was you know like no longer do we have like what do you call the broadcaster schedule hmm. or the publisher's headline. Hmm. You know like typically when you read a paper in the morning you see the headline. Yes. And the publish publisher gets to dictate that. Right. Uh, but the way an audience consumes content on online hmm. is that you go straight to what you like to see. Sure. So there's no concept of a headline or tonight at nine. Right. So those two things going off mm. uh, have made a big change. Mm. The other thing is that these things stay there forever. Mm. So you know, like the one big right. thing about TV always was that you know, rat gay, bad gay. So like it's sort of over and gone. But now it's all there, and it's there to be seen again and again if it's right. good, or to be critiqued again and again. Um, either way. Mm. So I mean, these are sort of changes happening. And um, but I think what remains the same is those two arguments that have always been there. That mm. one version is the consumer is really smart. And has evolved mm. and knows exactly what they want, and therefore you got to do that. Or that the consumer knows nothing, and you shouldn't really, you know, overthink this. And right. you got to feed the consumer. You got to tell the consumer a story without uh, sort of researching to ask them whether they want to see it or not. Right. So I think those that. Where, sort of where do you think in all of this the algorithm comes in, which tells me if you like this, you will like this? Is it inhibiting choice at some level? Because I don't get to know things that I would not otherwise like, which would be amazing to discover. Well, it definitely inhibits my choice, yes. but then I'm happy because you know I'm seeing a lot more Nordic noir or I'm seeing a lot more documentaries, so right. I'm doing okay. Sure. But I guess, but I think you no know, platforms would be a better place to answer that. But yeah, it does that. No, the reason why I'm asking this, uh, Sameer, because well, Midday is a newspaper that's hosting this award, and one of the things that we as newspaper people uh, do not like about internet is the lack of serendipity. So when you go online, go on social media, they tell you what to uh, to what to read. All the time. Whereas, if you've been a newspaper reader for long enough, the beauty is in the discovery on page 18. You know, right. something that Conan that's an amazing story, except that you would have never known about it. Do you think that applies to uh, platforms? I think it applies to the internet per se. Right. Uh, there is so much. I mean, you know, in the old days when there was one TV channel or one newspaper, it was a simpler world. It's a simpler world. Right. Uh, now, when you've got billions of pieces of information out there, it's fair to say that algorithms and big giants are dictating what you ought to see. Mm. Uh, and what you see is what you get more of it. Right. Um, you know your search results dictate a lot of things. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, it is going to those be are you no, know, those are fonder times. Which I see how no one is contradicting anyone here, right? I mean, you could. I'm just saying. What <laughs> you said to go down by down. Yeah. No. Okay. In this case, yes. But I mean, I can come back to you. You can always say something <laughs> where you contradict someone. Uh, coming to you, uh, Srishti, you come from film largely and television, of course. But I know you more as a film person. Well, how does it work for you to work in a corporate setup? Firstly, because I don't think you worked in a corporate setup before this. So it's been super interesting. Uh, but uh, at Netflix, we are very entrepreneurial, hmm. and uh, I don't know how it is in any other corporate. Sure. But I do know how it is. And the one thing that stays common always is your authenticity and your passion for your work, hmm. and that's always what communicates to the viewer. So, what are your unlearnings, as it were, from film, and what are your learnings 
in a new world which is Netflix? Well, I would say that it would be largely to not be judgmental about anybody's tastes. Mm. Because as a programmer, you're not programming just for yourself and what you want to watch. Right. But uh, we want to always have something for whatever mood that you're in mm. and what you feel like watching today. Mm. And at this moment, it's it's deeply personal mm. when you're watching uh, online, mm. and you don't nobody else knows. So you have your guilty pleasures as well as you have your conversation pieces. Sure. Right. So you know that's like a very interesting thing to find out. Mm. But uh, it's been it, it's been quite interesting to see how things are growing, you know, and the fact that you can do a lot of things that were not possible in the more traditional ways, right. but uh, now are like available. So I think the Algo does a great service, you know, it's like there are plenty of people who go to page three first of the mm. newspaper. They always have, yeah. And then you They've have the sports known. page as well. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty much like that. If that's who you are, then mm. that's what you'll get, sir. Varun? Eventually, as the multiplexes started expanding, we realized that cinema is a very neighborhood concept. From the neighborhood, now the power has shifted to one person, which is right at the home on the right. hand. So I think the power has shifted significantly in last mm. 15 years, 16 years. So that's the change. So ultimately now consumer is not going. I mean you have to go to consumer, take him out, whether to cinemas or to a certain app between the services, whichever service he may choose. So that's been the case. Vikram? I think at the end of the day we are in the business of storytelling. Hmm. Uh, TV could be storytelling in a bit of a community environment at an appointed hour hmm. and not much choice. OTT could be stories that are more individual, more controlled. Uh, when you want, what you want, how much you want. Cinema could be the, continue to be the replacement of the community outing, the mm. classic picnic that this country has grown up on and evolved right. and, and like Gaurav just said. Um, I think the changes are that at, at the spectrum two ends are moving. The audience has gotten more ruthless mm. at one level where they are saying there is value for our time and our money so we are going to watch only the stuff that totally thrills us and excites us and is worth spending that money and time on. At the other end, it's also more accepting when when community viewing like the spectacle of cinema etc is concerned. Mm -hmm. As a content creator, I feel what OTT allows us to do is tell a lot more stories in the manner that they would best be told. Mm -hmm. And I think everything else like sensibilities and technology comes in later. Right. Uh, I think it's never been a better time to be a content creator or a storyteller or a enabler or a platform or a distributor than, than is now. So I guess the aggregate of, of what I've heard right now and what we've been saying makes this truly a very exciting phase to be in. So I think this part that we'll take up at some point in the discussion <coughs> is it's never been a better time to be a content creator and does that mean there's just too much content and like life's too short like how many things are you going to watch? you know in a day it's only 24 hours but before that Ridhima uh, in this room you're the youngest uh, um, thanks for pointing it out no well <laughs> it's, I mean, I'm just assuming that you are if I were to compare you with everyone else here mm -hmm. I'm assuming you haven't had such a long stint uh, in the media and in business seeing it from what was conventional or what is legacy media and you are actually more uh, a native to the medium than you're a migrant uh, does that change things when you talk to people who've been in the industry for longer? Do you have a different perspective? Do you think you have a different perspective? Perhaps. I mean, I started my career at a Hollywood studio. Okay. Um, so I think I've Which always one was been that? STX um, okay. in, based in LA. So hmm. I guess I've always been on that film studio side of things and just watching content, you know, the content evolution from hmm. cinema to digital. I don't really feel like stories per se have, have changed as Vikram, you pointed out as well stories remain the same it's just the way our audiences are consuming it right. and their consumption habits are which are shaping and molding the mm. way these stories are served to them stories that wouldn't be seen in cinema are now being seen online now that audiences are demanding so much more the engagement lies within the writing and that's sure. something that i've witnessed mostly there's a conversation i had with ajay bijli who heads pvr and i asked him whether films are being affected because apparently the theater business is doing really well like multiplexes have had a boom this year in terms of, uh, you know, they've grown uh, hugely while, you know, OTT platforms have grown too. And his point is, and please weigh in on this, his point is that while uh, OTT platforms are really good with content, but the content they've been really good with is actually web series. Uh, and films still belong to multiplexes. One, do you think it's true? Uh, two, what kind of films belong to multiplexes? 
has there been a change in that? Because by and large, Hollywood is like gone, like just blast fests after blast fests. That's all they're showing us on the big screen. There is no, like even Scorsese needs to come to Netflix. And it's such a shame that that has to be watched in Netflix and not in the big Why? In the big Why theater. Is because Why is it a shame? <laughs> it's, it's an incredible theatrical experience. I, it, yes, but you know, to have to put, uh, restrict the amount of time that he can spend on telling the story in the way that he wants to, that's a bigger crime. To not have access to watch it for no, 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 don't get me wrong. No, 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 no. Crime. I watched that movie, big screen, three and a half hours. I did not know there were three and a half hours. So it's really a big screen experience, which unfortunately in India. I think, in India, I think, I think the point yeah. she's making is they would allow him to make it at three and a half hours or in the manner that they did, right? Right. So to that extent, it, it sort of the reason I'm chipping in is because it kind of underpins what we were talking about that it liberates the creators. So sure. it, the story finds the right medium right. Exactly. and therefore the right audience. Right. So no, I think the point I was trying to make was more about how Hollywood is only doing blast fests and even Scorsese needs to be on Netflix. But firstly, do you think that the revolution as it was so far has been more on web series than actually films? No, I think that's not true because economics itself is changed. Mm. You can make a film that is targeted viable because an OTT platform perhaps will buy it, which was not the case. Secondly, there are some films which go direct to OTT, as a lot of us will have in right. case in point. Uh, you know, you can see films faster and it releases you from the captivity of a cinema hall. And a cinema hall means you've got to be in darkness, pay 450 bucks. This is, you know, 365 bucks a year. So the economics is entirely different. You get to see the film in the comfort of your home and you can debate whether that's correct or not right. at a cost that's much more lower to the whole family is Guys, you don't miss the theatre really? Like, but why do you have to do you, do you not miss the theatre they're saying? No, no, it's, not, it's not either, it's not either or. or. But in this yeah. case it was, in Irishman case it was. It was either or. It went to Netflix, it did not go no, to theatre. If you go yeah. to a cinema to watch yeah. a film, there's another film that you can watch straight away, right? India yeah. has the distinction of having the most films watched on, uh, on our service. Mm. across from any region, mm. uh, our viewers tend to enjoy film more. Mm. That's just the culture of where you are and as we are evolving, we get better at it and put the kind of films out there and I think to Vikram's point, what, was, uh, what happens is that now we can tell a lot more stories which are end to end, which have to be told in a film format sure. and people are more uh, experimental with it. It's right there, you have the opportunity, you sample it, you like it, you go ahead. Mm. You don't have to put on your pants and get into a cab and go to a cinema hall. And then you are stuck on it. It matters yeah. to some people, maybe not. The other point that I want to make is the case in point Tamil cinema. Mm. I have to go to Aurora to watch it here. Yeah. I have watched Asuran already. I told him immediately as I right. came. Amazon Prime Video, you got Asuran. If you are a veteran fan, you are watching it there immediately. Right. You don't need to search for Matunga, go there and you know stand in line and figure out whether it did play or not. So right. it exposes you to a whole lot of cinema that you That's, that's been one early. big revolution in terms of Indian audiences having access to regional cinema, which was never the case before. With Amazon, is that, some, is that a conscious call that you've taken? Because you have some really good uh, regional content, uh, regional films that otherwise we would, well, as he said, or, or, or not at all, because there was no other place to watch it. And it like, especially Malayalam films, I mean, it's just everyone's favorite uh, uh, regional language cinema right now. And I'm sure OTT platforms have a lot to do with it. Yeah, of course. I just want to go back to the earlier yes. point because we think about it slightly differently and I want to tie it back to the point you made about you know, this has actually been a very good year for, for, for the cinemas. Business, yes. I think it's important to recognize that what's going on is that the, the, the bar on creativity has been, has been steadily rising thanks to the series format. Mm. You know, long format storytelling is encouraging really strong writing mm. uh, because the battle is really fought and won on the, in the writer's room. And then you're bringing in cinematic vision to be able to tell the stories and give them the length, the liberation. Right. And the, and the vision, you know, and support the vision of the creator fully. I think this is also allowing customers overall mm. to start raising their own expectations of what good cinema should be like. Right. And the proof is out there. So when people go to the cinemas and watch Badai Ho, mm. you know, they're actually celebrating great storytelling. Right. And so I, I think it, this is, you know, this is a great symbiotic two to tango situation. Right. And it is going to put a lot of pressure on filmmakers to keep upping the bar. And as long as they're doing that, I think you're going to see this virtuous cycle continue to continue to to turn. And that's that's our view, and we continue to to fuel it. Right. Um, 
specifically on regional uh, <coughs> content i think it for amazon it's really important to look at india in its entirety mm. and and we consider hindi as one of the many indian languages mm. uh, regardless of you know heritage of creativity and so on and so forth because depending on whose perspective you take you can argue for or against that right. um and for us we recognize that you know the just the whole package between the overall prime subscription and what it stands for mm. all the benefits that you get the convenience of the service just everything and the proprietary tech that supports it makes it super liberating for customers to lean in on authentic stories regardless of which corner of this country it comes from sure all right and we've always seen this in the past you know every now and then a story is broken out and then everybody in the most populous parts of this country i e hindi speaking for the most part mm. tend to celebrate and say wow i wish we had more access to it mm. except but it was done in a very in a in a very uh, one way format which is you had to then get on to a television station that you're not otherwise familiar with figure out when that movie is going right. to air and so on and so forth you've done away with all of that mm. now right and so there's no reason why you wouldn't want to discover stories from the length and breadth of this country and that's what we recognize right. and so for every movie that we premiere whether it's in malayalam kannada tamil telugu it doesn't matter or punjabi now right we believe that there's an inherent audience for it and then and i'm going to go back to your earlier point of the algorithm being limiting it's not it's actually liberating because depending on your taste and preferences it's going to start giving you these recommendations of movies right. that you otherwise would probably watch more malayalam started. films as a result because you like exactly. exactly. you watch know, a english film probably if you're on south yes. you watch a japanese right. film which is a good right. thriller yeah. so it's not right. just india and its region yeah. it's mm. you know the world over but we keep talking about this being a fantastic time for content creators which it is because they're all getting to tell their stories but i think it's an even more amazing time for the consumer mm. because the kind of liberation you get like to which is point what you're going to be served you can you know, the world is literally at the touch of a button so one thing on this movie thing since we are talking about it is that you know i'm a bit of an old timer in that mm. thank is you that in the movies are yeah, right you thank you in, <laughs> in defense of movies as in in the theatrical experience yes. is that uh, obviously from a consumer point of view movies have always been on tv right. um so all you know tv channels used to have movies yeah. and uh, then you have movie channels and uh, obviously ott makes the experience much better mm. my mother you know has to waited wait for weeks to catch the movie on on tv right then i introduced her to amazon prime mm. now you know her world has changed it also allows you to continue from where you left off which yes. has been revolutionary in yeah. her life um but the one thing what it does for the movie business per se mm. is that what the theatrical experience does is create a elastic profitability mm. when you release the movie theatrically what happens is that it can be a smash hit or it could be a flop right, right? it's all about the first but weekend it's, and stuff it's not like only that. just the first right. weekend it's about it's about that longevity it's about that ability right. for people to queue up and pay good money and buy tickets mm. sit in the darkness buy popcorn do all of that um and so that is what defines a hit mm. that's what defines super startup that's right. what defines a lot of things um if something comes directly onto a platform sure it's going to reach a lot more people mm. straight away but there's no elasticity to that mm. so far right uh, unless of course things change and you know i'm going to take you up on this the stardom part because whether you like it or not the audiences have always gravitated towards certain figures in terms of they like a particular actor and it's always defined box office business in there for the longest now that would be true for television too like there were characters that became really huge and as a result they became tv stars in their own right how does it work in the ott business is has that changed or is it that you need i know that you're working with akshay kumar uh, for one of the shows that you're putting together do you, are these going to be the same stars that we see or are we building new ones and we just don't know but they're being consumed because we don't even get data from ott well not so far anyway we don't either yeah <laughs> <laughs> but there are there are reasons why a few of our shows have stars in them hmm. when you're attempting a show of a certain scale and a hmm. certain desired experience we'd like that story to reach as many people as we can hmm. because ott is still in a bit of a growth stage in our country and therefore there are more fence sitters than people this side what these familiar faces do is that they give you reassurance that where your money is going to go hmm. and it's not that a, an amazon or a netflix hmm. has asked us to go and get these guys i mean why only akshay we work with madhavan and right. now abhishek Absolutely. and kamenan and, and and more 
I think what it does is it allows the masses hmm. which are currently not there because of either the higher quality of storytelling or you know the convenience of technology etc gives them a little reassurance to say this guy that I've seen in movies for hmm. 20 years and you know loved his work I can now see him in this so to some extent I think that's also an attempt at uh, supporting category creation hmm. uh to your point of are there going to be stars i think that's happening in the cinema world as well we don't have that conventional larger than life stars these right. are stars that stories are creating now right sure there's a huge carry over of the of the uh, bigger names globally <coughs> the ones that have been iconic and, and those are the big world. blockbusters anyway those are the yeah. big blockbusters and they'll continue to work irrespective but i think stories themselves are creating stars and stories are now demanding stars to to adapt themselves and uh, that's why i feel that that's this phenomenon is 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 media agnostic what about television how do you see television in terms of stardom different from how ott platforms are using content i think fiction on tv was very character mm. Mm. as in you know if you i mean right. one person became the hrd minister or so you know her name but by and large what happened with tv was that the characters were really famous right um and they were you know and tv also feeds on new people mm. so every new show always has you know new faces coming up tv right. ages you faster um a lot of the grandmothers on tv are actually 32 year olds mm. you know who sort of aged generationally mm. so tv sort of tended to do that it was like how advertising from before mm. uh, there are very few models whose names mm. stood out you remember the little girl you know right, kind right. of thing but otherwise yeah. advertising per se blanked out that person movie was the one movies were the ones where you knew sharukh khan sure you don't necessarily you know the character is good but you mm. know the guy um so i think now what's happening in this business of course is that we're still doing series mm. uh, but because the series are shorter in duration as mm. in you do 10 episodes then you do another season right. um so the actors are getting to stand out as in you you recognize the actors you mm. recognize the people um and that's good i mean and i think there are a lot of actors there are a lot of pe- see there's a whole bunch of people who uh were in the movies but playing bit roles right or uh, didn't want to do tv yeah. and were waiting to do something you know me- meaty meaningful that kind of thing so that's really opened up a huge <coughs> pool so because we were talking about learnings and unlearnings one unlearning uh that may have been uh from ott industry was this particular media myth about how you have to keep it short from keep it simple stupid like you know it became keep it short like we were told even in newspaper we told to write shorter par- like shorter news stories youtube told you to do shorter videos and here there are people who are sitting and even movies were supposed to be shorter we got to do 3 hours movies who's going to watch them to now when people sit and watch 10 hours in a go like that's binge watching was that was it a surprise for you guys as being media people that people actually have all the patience to sit all night and watch something whereas the general rule was to keep it short not at all Okay. I mean, look, all those formats and all those durations coexist. Yeah. I think when you're going long format and you're yeah. committing asking someone to commit 10 hours of her time, right. it bloody be good. Mm. And so you really have to give it the hard work before you go out there and demand somebody's time and attention and Does mind. it need to be better than a 3 hour long movie? 100%. Okay. I mean, it needs to be at least 3 5x better than a 3 hour movie okay. because you're asking someone to make a 3x commitment in terms of right. time. Right? and that's that's just one factor mm. it's also important to keep in mind that um you know that you you're ultimately programming to people's moods mm. right and so you got to be able to be honest to the story mm. uh, so if it doesn't demand the length then you're being indulgent and she's right. going to call you out on that right because again like i said the controls are really in her hands mm. right and so it's it's a function of all of these things and keep in mind um it's important to not lose sight of the fact that the very same customer is moving across these durations fungibly mm. if she has 15 minutes to spare and she's probably choosing five of her favorite youtube channels right right and if she's in the mood for a community experience with her family she's picking the movie she wants to watch in the theaters so i think n- none of these are mutually exclusive right right but The, the universal truth is that the longer the time commitment the better it better be both as an experience as well as the as well as the story itself no take it next year you want oh, to yeah, say i mean i agree with him you, right. you know if it's a bad film it's a short one minute film that you'll watch that you'll get up. Mm. so the format really doesn't matter the story does that's one for sure 
The other part of course is that the birth of these pay platforms, we are getting liberated from the TV format because advertising is not slowly a factor. On television, you've got to make something that's 18 or 20 minutes because right. you're going to fill the rest of the stuff with ads and then again make 18, 20 minutes and then again fill it with ads. Right. Now, if you're on pay platforms, nobody's asking you to put ads in between at that frequency or that formatted manner, especially hmm. on digital. So therefore, there has been a liberation for lots of writers saying that we have 22 minutes to write, we can write something else, 33 is it okay, right. you know, it, you know, how is that working? So I think that also has allowed but, but for the, what's the deal? What's the deal with the fact that because you have like captive attention for say 10 episodes and regardless of whether that show was great or not, you know, it's just much easier to make another season. Everything has, it's almost like you sign a contract for two seasons or three seasons. Is that self-indulgence at some level? Do you guys think so at all? Not at all. No. Regardless? You know, when you, when you, when you, no? when you like, like uh, to what Vijay was saying, right, is that when you say good, I, I would say honest. Hmm. Because uh, good is subjective, hmm. honesty is not. Okay. Right? So you have to be honest with the story that you're saying in the sure. format that you're saying it and for the person or the mood that you're trying to provide hmm. it for. So how can you say that this, if it worked for hmm. some people and didn't work for you, hmm. it doesn't mean it wasn't good. It sure, was sure. good for them, right? right? So then the season 2 automatically comes into play. So we actually have no idea on what worked, what did not. Netflix won't tell us. Amazon doesn't tell us. We assume that must have been loved, or at least watched by a lot of people for the second season to have been greenlit in the first place. Is that a correct assumption to make? Yeah, it's the most, the, it's the most simple and effective way to come to a conclusion. That's the best yes. way to know, right? So, Bar of Blood, second season is coming. Yes. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> You know. <laughs> yeah, but to your point, you know, this right. season, this <laughs> season concept for series programming is a very Western concept. Mm. In India, it's an or dikhao phenomenon. You know, nobody on television waits for a season. It's eight years or whatever, <laughs> seven years <laughs> running. Right. So this thing is a very Westernized concept that applies to a certain, you know, scale in India. Indians are used to television that's not season. It just goes mm. on and on and on and on. Right. And like it or hate it, mm. that's that's been the trend from 2000. So why we sit here and talk of seasons and making it again? That's because some guy in Hollywood decided that you know CSI will be season one 13 episodes, season two 13 episodes. Fair enough. Maybe but that evolution will be say different. in your case, uh, Nachiket, you're moving from uh, Balaji, which was making television shows which ran for years, as it were, to Alt Balaji, where. You don't necessarily need to do seasons, you can just keep doing episodes. Would you try something like that? Yes, so huh? we do 35 episodes, now we'll do 120 episodes soon. We're not sure about this scheduling 134 episodes? 120. Oh, well done. Probably, wow. that's still, <laughs> I mean, it's not right. well done for somebody who does 2000 episodes right. of four shows. So, right. You know, it's just a drop in the air. Right. But we believe that, uh, the, the only issue there is, you know, what we are grappling with uh, is, what is the habit formation that we are looking at? Mm. Because that was scheduled TV, so you would, you know, do it at 9 o'clock every day, hmm. whereas this is not there, so do you put 1200 on the first In day one row, right. drive yeah. that family right. crazy completely, right. you know, right. how do you do that? Right. So we are, we are not very sure about the mechanics of that, but we definitely see that if you have to, con because people who like our shows are saying, Bas, tera mein khatab ho gaya means ye kya ho hai? Hmm. You know, so see, that, when you were that, talking that, about consumption, right, that yes. you know, people are spending 10 hours watching, right. um, actually it's not a new thing. Okay. It just so happens that since we are putting out the series in this binge in format, one word, yes. we are looking at it that way. Mm. India is actually a very big entertainment consumption market, mm. right? So the larger Indian mass watches mm. TV four hours a day, mm. right? Four hours in the night. Mm. You're talking about almost 150 million homes, right? right? That's a lot of people. 600 yeah. million people consume four hours of TV every day, right? Right. That's half a season anyway. Yeah. Every so day. that's like a lot, right? Yeah. So to that extent, um, we are used to it. Okay. Uh, what it does is that because it's such a uh, big market and such a hungry market, um, binges get over very quickly. Hmm. You know, an Indian can binge through, as you said, if you're used to watching four hours of TV every day, you can binge through something in a day right. or two. Right. So, which then creates this opportunity. Hmm. Because and also our commute. You know, our commute, I mean, especially commutes create guide. an opportunity. Hmm. That, so, that creates the opportunity. consumption is very quick. So when you finish consuming content so quickly, mm. um, in a sense, as he says, we are used to watching something every day right. and it shows up every day. Right. So the requirement is give me more, mm. you know, or dikhao. And that or dikhao creates, a, you know. Like for film also, we are used to watch, investing like three and up to four hours in watching a film, the whole experience. So right. You have to wait. Yeah, there was a time when a movie had to be longer because exactly. it's just more AC and more songs and you stuff. 
full on experience yeah. as it is a short term like I'm doing the same for and this no hours. advertising is a very big deal mm. yeah so i mean the advertising community obviously doesn't take that seriously enough because right. currently this medium is much smaller mm. but the fact that there's no advertising there is this thing about you no know, cross industry kind of uh, you know when you when you have a good experience in a bank mm. you expect the same level of service on the airline yeah. Right. or at the bus stop or right. wherever you go mm. and in the same way this the more and more people who get acclimatized mm. to the way ott works mm. and to you know the, the ease of it the anytime anywhere ad free resume watching remember what i like recommend it <coughs> the more you get used to that you start expecting it right from you know like you have television mm. i mean tata sky and everyone did get dvrs yes. you could record your shows right. but the default thing we all do is fast forward the ads mm. yeah. right which mm. is a thing about getting rid of the advertising which is a thing to be thought about thought about know? it is right yeah. no the other point is that today in india you've got 1 gb free soon that's changing as of today but that 1 gb is a limiter to a lot of mass audiences for binge watching 1 gb gb mein teen episode dekh sakte ho fourth mm. episode is you he's paying or she is paying mm. and for the person who drives a rickshaw that 1 rupee makes a difference right he, he or she is making a meal of it in 20 rupees a day or whatever mm. so that 1 gb for three episodes is a limiter Binge viewing is largely, probably, you know, a higher economic strata phenomenon. But for the other so person, right. one GB, that's the limitation. And data shows across that. Who, uske that, is, problem. that is more to do with streaming. 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 That is more Probably a section of the elite society. section can stream it because the cost of streaming is such that you yeah. can't afford it. I mean, with the recent uh, yeah escalation of data cost and everything, it might impact your probably the low monthly fee. But there's one. Data I that tend to disagree on the on the one GB bit because if you look at <coughs> technology today and what we offer, we allow you to set the quality at which you want to watch it. Yes. I mean, the frugality is built into the your own choice. Nobody's we don't tell you what's the default. so you want to set data limits go ahead you want to set the quality limits go ahead you want to set the amount of data you want to watch in a day go ahead so i think it, you know people are yeah, smart enough to figure there's one data, data that you know usually netflix is very cagey about data is amazon but there's one thing that they've given out to the world is that among the 90, 190 countries it goes to india has the maximum downloads uh, and then there's also other kind of data which i didn't understand how they managed to figure out that the japanese people have it in their shower cap and that's how they watch <laughs> how do you how do you ever explain that but this one seems to true so clearly indians are downloading the most so they can they won't get good access to internet whenever they're traveling so i guess right. they're doing that so you were saying it's not something. just no it's not just the travel time right it's about like the commute that we have right it's not just about the uh, chase and of course we have some fantastic things like you finish watching the episode it automatically loads up the next episode for yeah. you and deletes Even the before you're done, like 5 seconds 5 4 3 2 3 What we have to remember is that we're talking about cinema, which is like a hundred years old, right. or like you're talking about linear television, which is like twenty years old. Hmm. This is very nascent. Absolutely. We're going to find that what it is that who enjoys, hmm. and it's going to take a little bit of time. There's going to be lots of great stuff. Right. There's going to be some lots of surprising things that hmm. may not be to our taste, which is going to be performing. Sure. Is that going to lead to more of that? How is it going to break up? These are early days. So here's here's my big fear, right? And this is a fear that comes typically out of how media industries have worked over a period of time. where they always go into what the masses want and they will always gravitate like i feel i find right now currently in india to be what is golden age of television with like shows like family man you know love stories there are lots of other great stuff that we've seen but the point being that this is one industry where the data is far more perfect than it's been for anything else outside of films perhaps but even in films you know you buy a ticket from the box office you go and watch it but when you come out nobody you don't write in the ticket i liked it or not whereas with an ott platform you know exactly when you stop you stop in second episode of a particular show well i did it has an idea what's working do you think eventually and that's my fear and address it guys is with media what happens is when you start doing too much research and too many surveys you start splicing out stuff which is not mainstream you just keep removing it to a point you reach that everything is the same because i work in newspaper just say it all newspapers start looking the same all radio stations look start looking the same all news channels start looking the same because you i stop anything which is not being accepted by masses do you see that as fear or this is actually going to go reverse because there's more space i think it's the most exciting time we actually see this as the biggest opportunity to bring to light surprising stories and and uh, insights 
right you know that will in that will further influence stories that will eventually become mainstream right what is mainstream is a function of you know how many people come oh, to okay. it right yeah but you know when we were when we were imagining mirzapur hmm. we uh, there was a whole section of people who said look it's it's too graphic in in the way right. you want to tell the story so we know that it's going to exclude a bunch of people hmm. or when we were working with vikram very early days with uh, i think we both sides not knowing anything more than the fact that you know we have a great opportunity to bring a story together a psychological thriller right i mean what are the market indicators that people are actually going to gravitate towards breathe hmm. but what drove that was the emotional core which was how far will you go to you know save a loved one right that universal truth appeals hmm. to everyone so i think it's really important to understand that you know this is not about splicing data and all that hmm. it's really about using as many insights as we can get from customers in a country as diverse as india right. and it's really important to keep recognizing that and use these insights to relentlessly raise the bar on creativity i think that's what this is all about this is not about standardization or any of that what do you agree really that about when, about when you know that you make a gandhi bath and it's watched by more people than anything else on your platform would you not continuously make more shows of that nature which so, it only helps you find more customers the no, one of the things is of course that the process is actually the exact reverse mm-hmm. if you got a hit mm-hmm. you know that you start slicing that audience saying 10 people of this gandhi bath have come from pali hill 50 right, people right. have come from and so Mulund. yeah no 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 can that no 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 from yeah. molun you know yeah. and, <laughs> and then you can distribute that so you need that one bit the digital medium allows you to disaggregate as much as aggregate hmm. so if you got the one big hit you can also cut that down so your process of the you know being stuck into this lowest common denominator thing now everybody has to make, make an again as mm-hmm. a rule is applicable on tv or right. everybody everybody has to make xyz you know is applicable on tv because there is no choice there there is mm-hmm. no individual choice now here you got individual choice so you can make a big universal hit like three idiots collect the audience on right. sony entertainment television and say okay 10 guys a few maybe like stories with murder in it so you go there you go so, there you go there at that reverse function is actually the beauty of the digital medium not the other way around you must put the big hit you must put the lowest common denominator big aggregator but your disaggregation is very very efficient with ai today so me would you agree see ott you know at least in india mm-hmm. is essentially a western import right right and in the us mm-hmm. uh, this over the top services starting mm-hmm. with netflix and everyone else is a new distribution medium for television mm-hmm. so there was tv Mm. and then streaming became the new way to distribute tv right so it's been built on the back of uh, american television mm. premium Ameri- american television right. at that so all the series we see that we you know applaud and clap for mm. and all of that has actually been created by american television and for american television like for HBO american would, television would, so would like hbo this. would make yeah. the grand show and it would right. come out on hbo and then it's all been aggregated and it's on to netflix and it's moving on from there right and so it's built out so when you come to india first of all we don't have that um, we don't have the legacy of premium subscription of premium television content at all. because we never made it for tv we were right. busy making saas bahu shows which did really well for us right. so i think ott in some ways in india is being invented mm. as we go along so of mm. course the international services are outstanding mm. because they look good in all of that but right. for the english language content right so when you come to the local language content i think we've got to create it you know mm. you can't throw money at this problem because there's nothing to buy Mm. right you have to create it every story needs to be written told i'm curious um, to know like where do you see television right now in all of this i get a sense that it's going more and more rural would that be correct to say no i don't in think so i think tv is like star bharat and all like it seems like so it's going deeper in actually terms of we started a version of star bharat some 15 years ago called star utsa okay so it's an old thing right. i think tv is growing i mean tv has got to the point of whatever 190 million homes mm. it's still got headroom Mm. um there's still a lot of people who haven't moved on to these services right yes. um it remains a uh, you know sort of a robust medium it's yeah, still, still a growing medium in the 10 20000 yeah. crores in revenue all yeah. of that is going on yeah um so i mean that will happen but mm. i think because tv is so big and tv is doing the kind of business it does it creates the opportunities for others to you know create new habits so are you suggesting that we actually don't have legacy of premium content and whatever it is that we're doing right now is starting from scratch in terms of the shows that are coming out that most of them are, are from films the people who are working well, in yeah yes yeah. platforms of guys from films when when you think about it mm. in the last the last time we made a weekly show mm. would have been in the 90s right right, right. and yeah. from 2000 onwards is primarily been daily soap opera right. within that there have been a few sure. you know we've done shows we've done star 1 which was actually in many ways a, a premium in the star at that time right. um 24 happened mm. um they did prisoner of war but as a daily mm. um so now when we make shows like family man or secret games mm. or daily crime or criminal justice or any of these these are shows which are being 
in a sense being made for the first time, albeit by the same people. Right. The industry is around, talent is around, mm. you know, all of that is there. See, the tendency also is that we are trying to identify this even in the way that the, the conversation is, mm. is to kind of find parallels in the old ways, right? Mm. If it's a new business, there are new ways that we kind of have to look at it. Right. So every time there's a new launch, mm. that is not necessarily what the, what the platform stands for. Mm. We're building out right now. Right. So we're building out several things and some of it will work for some people, some of it will work for other people. Mm. Right. So as you grow and as you build out, because when you're looking at, at say like a Netflix, mm. all right, or you're looking at HBO, mm. you're looking at an existing body that's coming to you with all these hundreds of hours of programming. Yes. So you have already decided what you like in that and disregarded what you don't. Sure. Even on our service, we do have Dynasty. We do have uh, uh, shows like Riverdale. Mm. You know, we have all those kind of shows as well. You just don't get served because that's not what you watch. Right. Right. No. no I mean, I think I think where I, where I was coming from was. You know, like for instance, it would have been impossible for mm. a film like or a series like Wild Wild Country, which yeah. is a documentary, okay. to get the level of distribution that it got because Netflix funded it. Now, I am pretty sure that while we all loved it in this room, mm. um, that many people would not have watched Wild Wild Country compared to something else everything, like maybe the Dynasty. Everything doesn't program. have to reach everyone, right. right? We want to reach everyone with the service, and I think you can back me up on this, Vijay. Mm is that you want to reach, you want the service to reach everybody and right. everybody to find what they are looking for on the service. Hmm. It's no longer like it is all linear that everybody has to like the same thing at the same time. Right. So therefore you are not stuck within those parameters. So I think a little bit of our commentary also needs to be mindful about that. Sure. Because we keep looking at things with that lens, hmm. which is not necessarily the narrative of what you have to say. That's so I think I, I couldn't argue early. this better than say that, you know, we got to take a variety mindset to the way we put yeah, content Yeah, so my out. fear is that eventually, while everyone wants that, eventually becomes what is the best, where to put your 10 rupees on because all you have is 10. Well, the that truth is, is, that is no that two customers are alike, right? Yes. Truth is no two customers are alike and right. we're not, the, the, at no point are we looking at this the way television looks at it, for sure. example, which is what's going to drive the highest rating, mm. right? We're, we're literally looking at what's going to get Mayang to watch more of my service mm. and stay loyal to my service. Along with and someone else whose tastes are dissimilar. And you know yeah. what happens yeah. is that even though we like to say it's an audience of one, the mm. fact of the matter is that humanity is not an audience of one, it's right. in large cohorts, you know, large groups of people. Right. That's why when you go to a shirt shop and you say, I want my favorite color and you pick blue, mm. there are about 50 million other people whose favorite exactly. color is blue. Right. So, I mean, you're always building out in that manner. So, mm. I think variety will stay, variety will grow mm. um, and the business decisions you are alluding to will get taken. I mean, that will also happen, but that's just part of... Uh, that's how it works. That's part of this. Sorry, you want to see? figure out who the everyone and who the everybody is. It's just too early for us. Mm. You know, there's been so much disruption to Shishti's point that's happened in such a small time. Mm. Technology, data's dropping, smartphones coming in, younger demographic, proliferation of content, mm. new mechanisms, content changing on film. I'm not sure who, this is the audience that's going to be the audience five years later. I right. mean, it's just so nascent. I'm, we, we spoke about seasons a short while ago. I'm the most curious about that. I don't know who's, who in this country is going to wait one year for a breathe season to. I hope lots of people would. Right. But is that consumer behavior? Mm. Are people going to wait like how we have all waited for western shows because mm. that's a certain habit. Why are we not making so much content in OTT for the sub 18 year olds? Mm. Or is that an audience that's already there? Mm. I mean, what happens when the 190 million worth of people sitting in front of TVs start saying this may just make sense for me? What happens to our content choices then? Right. I think it's just so early for us that we've got to throw a lot of these stories out there. Time will tell us how it's, what those segments are, but we may just behave in a homogeneous manner and just gravitate towards those five big shows, what we <coughs> do in terms of global manner, or we may just become a country of 300 segments consuming in that manner. Yeah. I think it's it's so many factors at play that have all concentrated in these last 36 to 48 months that there's going to be a bit of a... But I think what's, what's interesting is in the last 36 to 48 months, and a little, little longer than that too, and what's coming up in the next 36 to 48 months is how everyone has thrown their hat to the ring. And there are 42 platforms if you include music and video that's just a lot of content with just that many people, with just that many hours in a day. Hopefully they have some work to do also besides watch shows. 
genuinely, and now I want you to forecast, where do you see this going like this? Right now, we are sitting with Amazon, Netflix, Eros Now, uh, and you know, various others who are also providing content to them, Alt Balaji. I think Alt Balaji is sort of gravitated towards Z5 now also, in terms of the two of them coming together. Uh, there's Apple TV that's come in now. There's Disney, that's a huge one coming in too. Besides the 42 that already exists, I mean, I know it's a great time to be a content creator because someone needs to put stuff in, in terms of a shelf. But where do you see these things going, say, two or three years forward? Because hard to forecast longer than that. Well, Are you going to pay so much? Like, is one person going to pay 1,500 rupees when their cable bill was 200 until recently? So I think for us at Amazon, the North Star is always our customer. So we, we work backwards from there and we believe that as long as we are able to cater to her tastes and preferences, mm -hmm. give her great value mm -hmm. and keep doing that, I think we will no, be You fine. will own the planet in five years anyway. I don't you know about <laughs> that. I don't know about that. But um, uh, I, can, I can tell you from, yeah. a, from a Prime Video mm -hmm. India perspective, mm -hmm. that's how we think about the options. Let's go home. <laughs> and, um, I think it's equally important to understand that if you're getting all of that right, then the goal is really to become her preferred choice of right. entertainment. And How many do you think will survive? Yeah, that's not for me to tell that's because, you know, it's genuinely... Okay. I, I mean, I want you to weigh in on this because here you can be a little more neutral because you're not an aggregator at this point. Where do you see it going? I know it's working great for you because someone needs the content and you're making it and you have like... You know, umpteen choices. Well, you don't actually have umpteen choices. Oh, you don't? No, you don't. But okay. usually what happens is that in any business, in any mm. industry, there is yeah. always that growth phase. Mm. It attracts a lot of people. It happened with TV. Right. Um, in the 90s, if somebody had told you there'd be 600 channels, you know, yeah. that could have not made sense. <laughs> right. And they but it did grow up to that. Yeah. Now they're all falling apart. Mm. So I think that's a standard rise and fall kind of thing. Right. Um, any industry will have a, you know, a huge sort of you know, growth phase, right. then consolidation. Mm. There will be winners and losers. Mm. So, I mean, to think that there would be 42 equally competing and everyone... Impossible. It's like a Diwali party. Yeah. You know, it's early in the evening. It's just started. There's yeah. a lot of excitement. There are a lot then of people doing blind right now. A lot of that, <laughs> is, that is going on now. Yeah. Then it will sort of settle down. By about 11 o'clock, a lot of people have left. Then the yeah. high rollers are there. Right. Then by about 2 o'clock, many more have left. <laughs> you know, it plays out in that manner. It's just sort of a repeat. So, Fair enough. I think it will settle down. And okay, again, it will just echo what... <laughs> huh? The caterers are enjoying, <laughs> they'll continue to enjoy. Yeah. But to echo what Vijay is saying yeah. is that I think the big deal is going to be the quality of storytelling. Sure. You know, because finally you are talking to consumers and uh, you know, consumers got to spend time watching stuff. Right. And we used to in the old days say that you have a remote, you can change the channel. Mm. In, in this case, you know, you I can are, cancel you can, my subscription. You can ca cancel the subscription is terrible, but right. Uh, assuming you just change the no, show, no, move on. Because you have your, your show is playing on that one too. No, no, I'm also, you don't want anyone to cancel subscriptions <laughs> yeah. ever. You know? Right, but so. what about you, Aridhima? Because I know that Eros is a big uh, production house in terms of, you know, in films. But when you are entering this space, this OTT platform space where you're up against an Amazon that will rule the world at some point, Netflix that has been ruling OTT space for a while now, and various others, where do you see yourself in terms of ahead, in terms of future? Just to echo as well what Samir is saying, yeah. we're, we look at ourselves as like a new platform, I'm not so new anymore, but supported by like a legacy brand. And before we even started releasing any mm. shows, we had about 12,000 movies on the platform. Yes. So we've That's actually, your existing library. Exactly. And right. people have, you know, we've seen the viewership on those movies. Mm. So with or without the shows, we have that significant right. viewership. And just leading to your point is... But would you not pass on some of that to the platforms because that's also additional revenue for you? Uh, not at the moment. That's okay. not definitely not something Fair we're enough. looking at doing right. because we're still, you know, we've only started making shows like a year and a half ago, I right. would say. So we're still sort of getting right. into our strategy and, you know, taking a look at what people are watching and yeah. trying to, you know, cater the relevant content to them. But as well to what you said before is that we don't want to just be a taste curator. You mm -hmm. want to be a taste maker. Right. And I feel like that doesn't really come just from looking at data insights. Stories that have been shared in cinema before, a lot of it is gut, you know. So mm. I think that that has to be like a beautiful, you know, marriage right. between gut and um, data insights. And that, that's the only way you're going to create sort of aspirational content for people to look towards to. Otherwise, we're just going to keep making the same thing again sure. and again. And, you know, what we're looking at with our audience is that it's, it's a relationship, you know. It's actually asking them you know, sort of someone to marry you. Mm. you know, when you go home with, to that platform, you're like, I want to watch this. And that's what you need. So stories will win. It doesn't really matter um, how many platforms there are right now, but people will just gravitate towards where they feel most comfortable.
all weird analogies, huh? Marriage, Diwali party, <laughs> going on. It's definitely <laughs> a lot. <laughs> okay, uh, last question. Uh, this is the point where you get to sell yourselves in okay. terms of your content. Uh, tell us one thing that you that the audience should look forward to that you guys are creating right now and why. So we're launching a show in January called Flesh, okay. and that's created by Siddharth Anand. It's mm -hmm. all about human trafficking. It's something that we've been working on for quite some time and very near and dear to our hearts. So that's what to, what's to look forward to in January on Eros now. And apart from that, we have some digital films coming up. Um, we also have some short form content. Sure. So a lot to tune in. One through. thing, huh? One thing. Yeah. Done. That's uh, <laughs> I tried. Flesh, uh, Siddharth Anand, <laughs> yeah. February. Yes. Perfect. Vikram? Lots of new writers. Fresh talent. Breed season two. Breed season two. Got it. Got it. So few we have created, I think, which will come on service yes, probably sometime <laughs> early next year. Right. So one is uh, Betal, and second is Class of '83. Let's see. I think should come early next year or maybe next. They're both for Netflix. Both for Netflix. Mm -hmm. And Bob Biswas. Bob Biswas, which is an original film from. Which is second. Yeah, which is, or is a that theatrical a, film. It's a theatrical film. Yeah. Got it. So that's Red Chili's theatrical film, but no OTT space. Yeah. OTT space would be uh, class of 83 for sure yeah. and uh, we've announced uh, 24 films and 16 shows. The one thing coming up which we're really excited about is a show called Scam. Mm -hmm. It's being directed by Hansel Mehta. Mm -hmm. It's based on Sucheta Dalal's book of the same name mm -hmm. right. uh, which is the Harshad Mehta story mm -hmm. uh, which is a biopic set in the 80s and right. early 90s right. about Harshad Mehta. The, the Harshad Mehta Scam. Yeah. Our 53rd show, 53rd <laughs> show on the platform will be a show on parenting with Karishma Kapoor in February. Oh, nice. Interesting. So that's a non I mean, it's a non-fiction reality show? Is that no, fiction show. Oh, it's a fiction show on parenting. She plays parenting. Come out with your list. You know, so next year is pretty exciting because I think next we'll, we'll have 12 originals right. for the first time. 12 original uh, films? Yeah, uh, 12 original series Yes. From, from the time we started, which has been our kind of gold standard that we've been working towards. Hopefully one a month and that's the idea. Jan, uh, we have a show that I'm super proud of and I say this on behalf of everyone who's worked on it, Kabir Khan's Forgotten Army, right. which is uh, which is really a magnum opus. Um, it's, a, it's a fictionalized version of, mm. of the Forgotten Army and I must admit that it has to be one of the best pieces of content I've seen in my life, Whoa. not, just, Whoa. not Whoa. just in what I do for a living. Perfect. It really turned out very Perfect. well. Now that I have all of you in this one room and I also have audience here, which is one of the reasons all of you in this room is one of the things to look forward to is Middays and Radio City's Hit List Web Awards. The plan is essentially to honor and go as deep as possible because we have 15 uh, product categories and the idea is to dig deep and find as much great content that we can, not just the ones that everyone knows about and hopefully uh, you will see you all at the dinner uh, when the awards happen. Thank you so much, all of you, for being here. Thank you. This was a fabulous conversation. Thank and you. all the best for 2020. Yeah, thanks Thank for having you. us. Thank, Thank you for having, having us. us. Thank you. Congratulations on the first uh, Radio City's Hit List Web Awards. I'm super excited to tuning in and seeing what's in store. Congratulations on the first ever Radio City Midday Hit List Web Awards. First of its kind, super excited, can't wait to be there. Congratulations. Uh, Radio City Midday for the first hit list web awards. It's a great initiative. Considering a lot of work is happening on the digital side, it's a great opportunity for, to get recognitions for a lot of people who are involved with this platform. Thank you so much. Look forward to the awards. Congratulations, Radio City and Midday, for the hit list uh, web awards of 2020. Uh, super excited for it and looking forward to seeing it. Congratulations to Midday and Radio City for the first uh, hit list OTT awards. We're really looking forward to this. Uh, congratulations um, to um, the Hit List um, Web Awards 2020. Super exciting. Um, all the very best to all the contestants and may the best stories always win. Congratulations uh, Radio City and Midday on the Hit List 2020 Web Awards. Don't miss it. Be sure to always catch it on the web or on radio or in print. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.